few storylines in sports have made me burst into tears um, with laughter. Few. I I can't recall many um, storylines that that have done that. I can't even point to a scenario where I read something and I just burst out laughing as if I was watching Step Brothers or Talladega Nights or uh, Wedding Crashers or any of the great comedy movies that have been released uh, the last you know 10 years or so, 15 years or so, 20 years or so. I grew up really in the golden era, my generation, the 18 to, to 26, you know, demographic or even 18 to 32 age demographic grew up in a, in an era where the, there's been so many great comedy movies. You really think about it. You, you don't find yourself laughing at as hard at a, uh, sports headline as you would any of those movies. But yesterday I found myself just, I could not stop laughing at this story. And I thought, man, this is going to be one hell of a topic to talk about on the podcast. And I, as everybody knows, I, I keep everybody up to date as best as I can with the latest breaking news storylines live on the Thomas Take Sports Podcast, as I have always done, as I always will. For as long as I'm living and breathing, this podcast will be going. And it has really been a hell of a journey these last almost three years. So, here we go. Floyd Mayweather, the quintessential best boxer of his era, of his generation, uh, the the most successful boxer financially uh, of all time, has found yet another way to reinvent the wheel. And the wheel is relevancy. The wheel is finding the ability to to stay as relevant as he has stayed for the last 20 years, and then some. And largely, obviously, the avenue that he's chosen to do that is his boxing career, because he is a boxer. But within these last, you know, within the last calendar year, within the last two years, you could say... He's found a way to reinvent himself coming off a a two-year retirement. Fighting a guy like Manny Pacquiao, there was so much fan interest for that fight that largely didn't deliver. He bookended his career with a fight against Andre Berto, which was not a Floyd Mayweather-esque going out with a bang. He wanted to make sure he went out with a bang. And then the Conor McGregor fight was made, and it was the second highest uh, purchased pay-per-view in the history of pay-per-view. The first was his fight with with uh, Manny. That was because he had two cream of the crop boxers um, in terms of the, their generations. That was a generational, you know, fight. And this fight with Connor was was a generational spectacle. So though both of those spectacle and, and generational fight, um, classic battle. You know, one that was for more sport, the other one was for spectacle. That led to two highly um, paid, you know, purchased pay-per-views. And since the Conor McGregor fight, there's been this chatter as to whether or not Floyd would would step into an octagon. He's made hints at it. There's been circulating storylines as to whether he would. The fact that we are now in an era where we are post Floyd Mayweather's boxing career. We know that Floyd took on a fighter in his last boxing fight that largely shouldn't have been in the ring with him. And and I'm not saying that as the end result, it was presumed that Connor shouldn't have been in the ring with him. But Connor showed some impressive things. It it did take Floyd a half hour to figure out how to beat him and to and to knock him uh, TKO him against the ropes, but all that aside, um, and I lost track a little bit there. But all that aside, Floyd was able to extend his relevancy. 
But in the meantime, Floyd taking that fight created a new narrative that, that he just simply couldn't ignore. And that was people saying, well, Connor went into your realm. Why don't you try going into his? And it created this Floyd versus Connor in the UFC talk. Well, Floyd was listening, but he, he wasn't fully listening because Floyd Mayweather has signed with Risen, which, if I were to explain the hierarchy of MMA right now, if I were to say the number one organization is X, Y, Z, you know, if I were to rank these organizations, the UFC would be number one, Bellator would be number two. One FC would be number three. Cage Warriors, the MMA organization in Ireland, would be probably number four. Invicta Fighting Championships would be number five, as they are the biggest women's, all women's MMA organization. And let's just say Risen would be the dead last in terms of major promotions. And granted, I, I do say that, you know, kind of somewhat lightly because one thing we don't really understand here in North America and the United States is that certain organizations are bigger in certain areas. And obviously Risen is massive in Japan. And Japan has such a cultural uh, imprint on MMA as far as Pride, back in the day, the Pride Fighting Championships was, was such a big organization. Largely, it was the biggest threat to the UFC. And they are trying to get back into the MMA mix. So I'm not saying that Risen doesn't have legs to stand on. They definitely do. They are conducting their business with an arena in Tokyo, Japan, that is really well known as being the number one arena in Japan in terms of sports spectacle, the Saitama Super Arena, which is an arena that featured some of the best pride MMA fights of all time. Uh, largely the, the, the birthplace of the careers of Vanderlei Silva and Rampage Jackson and Mark Hunt and um, Dan Henderson and Fedor Emelianenko. So many great fighters fought in pride. And some of the best fighters in MMA fought in Pride. And Risen is, is trying to become that again. They're trying to bring that back. So Floyd Mayweather taking this fight in Tokyo, Japan, I'm, I'm sure the dollars and cents made sense, or else Floyd would not have done it. The question is, how much money is has Risen lost in the last year or so? Or how much money have they made? Are they a successful financial product? Obviously, they are churning along, so they have to be doing something right overseas there in in Japan. Um, and adding a fighter like Floyd Mayweather to its roster brings notoriety. There's no, no question about that. But this is as laughable a storyline as any I've heard in, in a long time. And I started the show off with that. But the reason why I laugh at this is because Floyd once again, once again, provided the fans with something that they didn't ask for. That's all he's ever done. The only time he fought a fight that the fans asked for was his last boxing fight. Mind you, it was a career that, that that was bookended by a winning performance versus a fighter that had never fought professional boxing ever. Zero and zero, zero and zero. Conor McGregor's wins and loss record. Floyd Mayweather bookended his career with a fifty and zero boxing career, legendary record. But throughout his career, he would largely made promises he couldn't keep or gave the fans what they didn't want rather than what they wanted. He gave the fans what they wanted eventually, but not at the time in which they asked for it. Key point of example would be Manny Pacquiao there, um, Marcos Maidana, not really uh, the opponent that he should have been fighting at that time. There was a lot of opponents that Floyd fought that he very well knew he was going to beat. And 
there were a few opponents that Floyd Mayweather ever, ever fought that were real true in their prime challenges to his O, oh, to his record. And yes, that does mean I'm saying that he largely cherry-picked his opponents, being that he was his own boss, he did own his own company, and there's no difference in this. There's no difference in this whole process of him fighting for Risen that is him not cherry-picking his opponent. But this kid, this 20-year-old phenom who is a 126-pound champion in Risen, their weight classes are a little bit different, he's much smaller than Floyd, but his stand-up is there, his kickboxing is there. The real question is, Risen is an MMA organization, but this bout is supposed to have a particular rule set. If Floyd was going to do this, if Floyd was going to step into any MMA-specific realm or type of realm, this whole rule set idea is a real joke. And it does not give him any respectability amongst MMA fans. He listened to the criticism, which is something he never says he does. But he listened to the criticism, and I think he's always listened to the criticism of his career. For him as being as successful a boxer as he was, as he is, I guess, being that he's still actively fighting now, I would say that no nobody hated more constructive criticism than Floyd Mayweather. Nobody has hated it more. So the fact that he's put on this persona like he doesn't listen to the fans, of course he listens to the fans, this fight wouldn't even be happening. Wouldn't even know who this opponent is that he's fighting. And I'm not going to pronounce his name because I know I'd botch it, but a young 4-0 MMA champion in Risen that has real kickboxing MMA ability. And if they're going to make this a specific rule set fight, even if they add the narrative that it'll be punches and kicks, it'll be a kickboxing bout with boxing rules, which is what I think it could be, Floyd is in serious trouble. Unless we know one thing about pride. And I'm going to go back to that. We know one thing about pride, and that was that the referee had an earpiece in, that the fighters made mutual agreements before before uh, opening the curtain to walk out to the cage, walk out to the ring, I should say, in pride. Those fights were fixed, largely fixed. Those fights were rehearsed. Those fights, the fighters were as in WWE fashion as, as any organization in MMA. And you take a look at Bob Sapp's career record, and you would know that. So I think that this fight here in Risen should not even be taken seriously. It's a joke to MMA, and it is a way for Floyd to end his career with even more criticism, much like he did versus Andre Berto originally, and then him coming back to somewhat try to redeem himself. There was no better bookend moment in Floyd's career then that win over Connor, because more people saw it than almost Manny Pacquiao. It gave the fans what they wanted. He could have just stayed away, but he had to listen to the criticism because Floyd Mayweather is a narcissist, egomaniac, the likes of which we will never, ever see in boxing, kickboxing, jiu-jitsu, Let's just say in combat sports ever again. We will never see it to this level. And to the level of which Floyd Mayweather has had the success that he's had. And I'm not going to take anything away from him. This guy, as I said, is the best boxer of his era. There, There is no doubt about that. This was the Mayweather era that we've lived in the last 15 years. There might be other fighters along the way like Manny, like Cotto, like Marquez, Floyd beat them all. Do I think the rate in which he took the opponents or or the, the breaks or the, the moments that he fought them were, were untimely or, or past their prime? Yeah, I do. But he still fought them and he still beat them. And when he ended his career against Conor, I thought it was a great step. But this is a joke. And that's it.